The more time I spend around this car, and I've already spent a considerable amount, the more impressed I am with the overall scale of everything. All the components are over-engineered and beautifully engineered. They're not just big and massive, they're gorgeous. Everything is like a piece of jewelry. Look at this oil pan. You can't believe someone's actually gonna put oil in there. This anti-sway bar, this lower control arm Ford steel, my God, it's unbelievable. Even the drive shaft is beautiful. I could go on and on for hours, but you have to see it for yourself, which of course you can't unless you get under the car. But one of the ways I judge a quality product is when the people who make that product put the quality in in places where no one will ever see it. You and I have seen the Bentleys. We've seen them, what, on the King's Road, Orchard Road, Sunset Boulevard, wherever the hell Bentley lives. So I decided to do exactly the opposite and take it where I would take my own car. Now let's set the record straight right out of the gate. The purpose of this film is not to take a 5,700 pound car around corners. Although, we are indeed going to do just that, a little bit later. No, the purpose of this film is for me and Gene and I to demonstrate why this Bentley is so much more special than any other Bentley produced today. And here's an advanced hint. The answer is not contained solely within the vehicle. So without further ado, let's go back to me and Gene deconstructing the Mulzahn, literally. I took the wheel off to show you the brakes, but while I've got this opened up, I want to show you the front suspension. This is the air level ride bag here, and these wires go through the car to the control panel inside, where you can set the ride height and the ride firmness. There's soft and sport, and then Bentley. And I don't know what the Bentley setting is, but when you set it to Bentley, the car immediately takes you to Tiffany's. Is it a Lotus Elise? It definitely isn't. But, I mean, look at this. I, I can go around corners and feel completely confident. Granted, I'm in the sport mode on the transmission, sport mode on the suspension, and I'm choosing to switch my own gears. But the old lump in there, and that's from 1959, is the original design of that thing. Back in the mid-50s, when Rolls-Royce and Bentley were the same company, there was a need for a different kind of engine. One less about horsepower, one more about pulling power. So they developed the six and a quarter liter V8. It was high tech and then it had an aluminum block, and its design was inspired by Rolls-Royce's own Merlin aircraft engine. The initial versions even shared this same combustion chamber shape as the Max Wedge Mopars of its day. That engine became known as the L410 V8 and powered virtually every Rolls-Royce and Bentley for the last four decades of the 20th century until the two companies split. Now fast forward to 2014 and the L410 V8 is 6.75 liters, has two turbos bolted to it, and produces 99.5% less emissions than it did in 1959. And while it takes 30 hours to produce, its mission is still very much the same. 752 pound-feet of torque. A basis of comparison, the AMG version of the S-Class, the S63, produces over 100 pound-feet of torque less than this Mulzahn. So while we let that marinate a bit, a trivia question. Who was the first car manufacturer to design, build, and install a V8 into a production car? Answer in the comments below, or hit us up via our social networks. Now, back to Mean Gene. Well, you get a load of this. 15 and a half inch diameter cast iron brake rotors, inch and a half thick, ventilated, with air ducting to cool it down. 14 inch brake calipers that in themselves are a thing of beauty and an absolute piece of jewelry. They're hand polished, powder coated black, with the Bentley name embossed and polished. I love the dash expanse, man. It's just, this is the true definition of a dashboard. It even has this iPod holder. You actually pay extra to have this drawer built into the dash so you can put your iPod. Now, a neat touch, but I've actually got one better. Let's clarify. When I say better, I mean one of the many things that make this Bentley more special than other Bentleys produced. And I don't mean the litany of leather, wood, and wool that actually stitch this thing together. I mean one of the most basic building blocks of any car, undercoating. It's uniformly uh, a nice thickness. Uh, it's kind of hard to say it, but if you compare it to 
the way undercoatings used to be, yeah. uh, you know, they're glopped on and it's, oh, it's you know, thick here and it doesn't get on there and it's sticky. And, okay. Yeah, this is, a, this is very much a part of the car. 752 pound-feet of torque doesn't really wash through your brain. You don't calculate it until you put 5,700 pounds on the road with it. Okay, so it's not exactly all torque. The Mulsan produces 505 horsepower and does its French namesake proud by sprinting to 60 in 5.1 seconds. But that begs an important question. How do you get so much torque and horsepower, unlike its continental baby brother, to the ground for only two wheels? Now back here under the rear end of the car, I don't want to be redundant, but once again, everything is massive, everything is large scale and beautifully executed. Forged steel, forged aluminum everywhere, and the lower control arms are so massive that they even have their own aerodynamic cover for them. This car has a significant amount of options. The options on this car equal a very nice Audi, shall we say. Yes, this is the part of our store where we can tell you how the glove box is lined with the same leather as on the seats. The foot pedals look like something that should be featured in an art gallery. And the example you see on screen here is fitted with the coolest 21 inch wheels you've ever seen in your life. But once again, the speciality here is something you would see on other performance sedans that the crew in the United Kingdom reinterpreted for this model of Bentley. Under the back end of the car, the exhaust system gets a little interesting. They've gone to these flap valves in the exhaust pipes. A lot of the manufacturers are doing that these days. But what makes this interesting is there are two exhaust pipes coming out the back of the muffler. The main pipe, which is a large diameter, the flap is controlled by a diaphragm. And when the flap is open, the exhaust gas goes out the main pipe. But when the valve is closed, the exhaust gas goes out the smaller diameter pipe and that changes the torque characteristics of the engine and also the tone of the exhaust system. You know, back in February we had the Continental and that, that car, man, it was pretty awesome. Convertible, it was a very odd color, purple, but man oh man could that thing get up and scoot. 12 cylinder engine. But I gotta tell you, the Mulzahn at this. This is a Bentley. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to Tony Ball. Tony's the guy that built the engine in this very Mulzahn. Tony learned his craft from a guy who learned it from a guy who learned it from a guy who learned it from a guy who was in World War I. They all learned their craft in a factory that's been around since World War II. You see, back in 1998, when BMW and Volkswagen were duking it out over the brands, they were focusing on the wrong thing. They should have been focusing on crew, or more importantly, the craftsmanship contained within that factory. Now, don't get me wrong. Bentley has definitely benefited from the cash, technology, and business know-how of Volkswagen. But craftsmanship, that's a term that is so overused nowadays. Even Bentley's own Continental, a technological tour de force, and yes, some of the bits are made in the crew factory with the crew craftsmanship, but other bits are made on a serial production line in Germany. The Mulsanne, not so. Which is why the Mulsanne is the most special of all Bentleys. And with that, I want to say cheers to two people. Of course, Tony Ball and Bernd Pichatrida. Bernd was the guy that negotiated the Rolls-Royce deal on behalf of BMW. But when the two companies were finally separate, in an odd turn of events, he ended up working at Volkswagen. Okay, so here's the script. For a new Moto Man film every week, click subscribe. And to get a sneak peek of what's coming up on the show, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, Motoman TV, all one word.